new generation of art lovers, owning an original trainer is better than an original turner. They collect sneakers, they hunt through galleries, they revel in rare finds, and they sell them on for big money. They're sneakerheads, for whom pursuit of the ultimate pair is all. It's not about just having trainers and collecting them, it's about suiting your own style, trying to find something unique. These are my favourite trainers of all time, the Black Album Air Force Ones, uh, personally signed to Slamming Kicks by Jay-Z. A lot of it goes back to early hip-hop culture where it's kind of one-upmanship. This is my favourite trainer, um, this is called Epic, only 24 pairs made. You know, you might not have loads of money and you might not live in the best estate, but you've got the best shoes on. These are my favourite trainers, the Adidas shell toes. Got the old school Adidas logo on the side and the pink. Kish's 900 pairs of trainers, which cost around £100 each. That's 90 grand spent by this modern day Imelda Marcos. The whole thing with the, with the, with the sneaker, um, the sort of sneaker heads within hip hop, within you know whatever sort of circle you're in, even if you're on the terraces, whatever, the whole thing comes down to wearing or trying to wear something that will turn heads. You see a pair of kicks, or somebody's wearing a really nice pair of trainers, and you just like sort of catch you. I go, ooh, damn, that's pretty wicked. Do you know what I mean? That's cold. Looking for sneakers isn't a normal afternoon shopping. Visiting a trainer boutique is more like entering an art gallery. When we designed the shop, it was it was with the intention of making it look like a street, you know, with the scaffolding, the concrete walls, the park benches. But what we wanted also was to sort of display art. In our opinion, you know, all the trainers are art. Exclusivity has become so popular that people, you know, will do anything. I mean, people will queue up for 22, 24 hours for a certain shoe to be released, only to go and throw them on eBay um, the next day. Trainers can be considered an investment, for sure, if you keep them fresh and you've kept them on ice for a bit and then you need some money and it's, it's a highly desirable model, you know, colourway, whatever, um, you can sell them on because some sneaker collectors will pay mad money for shoes. They'll pay thousands. Russell Williamson and his team at Crooked Tongues are the men behind a remarkable new book on sneakers. The Complete Collector's Guide is produced by Thames and Hudson, the major art publisher, recognising what they call this renaissance of trainers. Titans of the trainer world, each of an entry, reflecting the reverence sneakerheads show towards every great pair. These shoes here have been causing quite a bit of a lot of storm on like websites around the globe at the moment. There's only 35 of these being given out to people around the world, and you can't buy them in a shop. Now I've got absolutely no idea how much these are worth, but I'm sure they're going to be pretty expensive. Online collectors swap tips to care for prized shoes, like keep them in the fridge and clean them with a toothbrush. Russell's site Crooked Tongues is a favourite. There are certain inv individuals that are on there every day. People use it to kind of news because we put a lot of news up on what's coming. We do our own photos, get the shoes, lace them nicely and you know really show people what are coming and kind of show shoes in their best light basically. The sneakers had a long journey. What was once a practical shoe strode off the running track and has left a footprint all over popular culture. Without doubt it really is the must-have shoe of our era that journey from sportswear to urban essential. It's a marketing phenomenon. It was Germany in the 20s when shoemaker Adi Dazzler made his earliest trainer. The first celebrity endorsement came when Jesse Owens wore his shoes to win four goals at the Berlin Olympics in 1936. Nike swooshed onto the scene in the 70s, but it wasn't until 1985 they signed basketball rookie Michael Jordan in a collaboration which seduced young black America. As Air Jordans sold millions, rappers joined runners as sneaker fans. Run DMC even wrote songs about their shoes. When the internet kicked in, sneakers began to be collected as art. Adidas and Nike realised a new marketing strategy had fallen at their feet and fostered it. Re-releasing old trainers, issuing special editions and collaborations, all in limited numbers, leaving sneakerheads with their tongues hanging out. But is there an irony here? Sneaker connoisseurs might collect and celebrate trainers like works of art, but are they just unpaid marketing tools? 
companies and big conglomerates and big brands are always looking at ways of extending their brands, of getting more consumers on board, of being more hip. And so they use really clever strategies like sneakers as art. These kids who are obsessed with sneakers, willing to shell out, what, like a hundred quid every six months. And it's an advertiser's dream. We're all hoodwinked by the kind of fashion marketing machine. So, you know, sneaker is art, I say sneaker is exploitation. There is definitely a movement of people which are becoming more savvy to market employees of these large sneaker companies. I think ultimately um, the choice between um, fashion and, and conscience, fashion nearly always wins. I mean, everyone's a pawn in a marketing game to an extent, but it depends how much you let it control you. I'm a victim of it, yeah, but it's, it's you live by it, you die by it. Kicks. What do you know about kicks? I know a lot about kicks. I know a lot about Reebok punks and cheap nicks. Feelers, LA gears over the years, I caught them all. Now Karachi's G's. I can't lie, my heart's in trainers, guy. You ask if I know about kicks? Come on, guys.